Now, do you know the meaning of all these Lakshmis? Can you tell them? Or should I tell? <coughs> now, first is the Adya Lakshmi. Adya is the one who is the primordial. Primordial Lakshmi. Now, as I told you about, that she came out of the sea. So, that's what we call, uh, Christ's mother was called as Mary, Maria, because she came from Mary. People don't know why she was called as Mary. My name also is, as you know, is Mira, meaning coming from water. Then the second one is Vidya Lakshmi. She is the one who teaches you the technique of handling the divine power. Now this is to be understood very well. What is a Lakshmi? Lakshmi is graciousness. So she teaches you how to use this power with graciousness. Now, this is what is the blessing going to you, so that you get the power of Adya Lakshmi by which you become like water. Now, what is the water? It has a cleansing power and it shines. Without water we cannot exist, it's life. So that's the first blessing for you is that your face shines with Adya Lakshmi, that you become cleansing and that you can sink all that is material, all that is light can float on you. The Vidya Lakshmi is the one, as I told you, gives you knowledge. Knowledge how to handle the divine power graciously. I'll give you an example. I have seen many people, when they give bandhan, it's such a crude way that, no, it is not to be done. It's a Lakshmi's blessing. So how you do it? Very carefully. You see me, how I give always. I never do that way. I cannot. Unified. With respect, with grace, she represents the respect part of it. And that you get, that knowledge how to do it gracefully, everything to be done gracefully, in a manner that looks gracious. See, some people who talk have no grace, some people who give knowledge of Sahaja Yoga also have no grace, and they talk in a disgraceful manner. So all the grace, how to use the knowledge of the Divine is given by Vidya Lakshmi. Now Saubhagya Lakshmi, she is the one who gives you good fortune. Good fortune doesn't mean money, but it means the grace of money. Many people have money, but it's like money on a donkey. You do not find any grace in that person. Or it doesn't also mean, Saubhagya doesn't mean only money, it means all the good luck. All the good luck in everything in a very gracious manner it gives. To you the blessing, so that you also are blessed, as well as those people who will meet you will be blessed with Saubhagya. Amruta Lakshmi. Amrut means the one that is the nectar. If you take that, you will not die, means eternity. So she is the one who gives you <coughs> the life of eternity. Graha Lakshmi. Graha Lakshmi is the deity of the family, the one who is the deity of the family. Now, any housewife need not be Graha Lakshmi. She can be a shrew, she can be a horrid thing. The deity of the household. If she resides in you, then you are a Guru Lakshmi, otherwise you are not. Then there is Raja Lakshmi. 
she is the one who gives grace to the kings. If the kings behave like servants, then they are not called as kings. They have to behave in a dignified manner. The dignity, the majesty of the king comes from the Raja Lakshmi in him. But a Sahajogi need not be trained. He walks very straight, in a very stately manner, in his movement he's stately, he's very majestic in handling people, he's very gracious in doing anything in such a manner that people think, oh, here comes a king. Satya Lakshmi. That is, that you get the awareness of truth, but apart from that. The awareness of truth is there, but to put the truth forward in a gracious manner. Not to, now this is the truth, have it, not like that. You don't have to hit people with the truth. You have to put it in a flower and give it to them. That is Satya Lakshmi. Of course, the all Lakshmi tattvas are the parasympathetic powers within us, but they are actually expressed in our brain. Brain is the Virata, is the Vishnu when he becomes the Virat, the Akbar. So all his powers, these are especially these powers, are in the brain. So the brain itself spontaneously behaves in such a manner that people think that this is a special type of a personality. Then we have got Bhogya Lakshmi, by which you know how to enjoy. A Sahaja Yogi always knows how to enjoy everything. He doesn't The Sahaja Yogi is never worried type. Anything he can enjoy. Once we climb a very steep place called Palitana, it was about six miles, about like that, as if walking for six miles. Climbed up, I reached there, I saw the beautiful carvings. I was not tired at all when I saw the carving. And I was telling my son in law, see, every tail of the elephant is made differently. He says, Mother, I am panting here. How can you see the tails of the elephant? It is because I can enjoy. You should be able to enjoy anything. Now supposing you see something absurd, ridiculous, then you should laugh and enjoy. This is the ridiculous thing, you see. It's absurd. But one should not get angry with somebody because somebody is absurd or funny but should make it enjoyable. So that is the greatest, I think one of the greatest blessings, that she gives you the power to enjoy things. Otherwise, whatever you may try, people don't enjoy anything because they have become so ego-oriented that nothing goes into their heads. They have to be tickled here with the electrode. <laughs> Yoga Lakshmi the one who gives you yoga. That power is within you, that is the power of Lakshmi within you, means you give others the yoga. Now when you give the power of yoga to others, I mean when you use your power of yoga, then you don't behave like a monkey or a donkey or a horse, but you do it with grace. Do it in such a manner that it is very gracious. That is what you call gentle, dignified, majestic way. Three words for one word. So this is what it is. And now when you have sung it in this manner, this power has been bestowed upon you. 
Now, even if you want, you cannot behave indecently. <coughs> you are fixed. <laughs> All right. Thank you very much. So, mantras should be said deliberately with understanding. Like the one you have made one poem, song. In that you sing in a proper way. Never just go on, Shri, this Shri, that Shri. No, no, no. It's like taking a roll call of the Lakshmis. Are you there? Are you there? Are you there? Like that. So now do it in a very deliberate manner and with due respect and graciousness. Because especially with the Lakshmi thing, you have to be extremely gracious. You have to use very gentle words and gentle tunes and gentle uh, notes. All right. Now do it slowly, steadily and without hurrying up and understanding what you are saying. She, she rides on an elephant, not a, in an aeroplane. Shri Mataji, shall we sing it uh, in one part or we can try to sing it in two parts? No, one part. Is, one part two parts is not good. That also is wrong. One part. One All part right. and with deliberation. See, every word should be clear-cut. Then. These are mantras, you see, they, these are the words which are enlightened. <coughs> and this is only very few people have this adhikara, you see. You have, because you are such yogis, to sing mantras. Now let's have it, not in parts, sing it in one. Slowly, not Lakshmi. Ra 
ರಾಜಲಕ್ಷ್ಮಿ started flowing and uh, now the meanings you know this now today when we are doing lakshmi puja all these are uh, blessings on your chakras which are bestowed upon so it has to be done in such a way that the deity should be happy and you should get all the blessings see these are mantras There's a difference between a music and a mantra. The mantras act on your chakras and open that part in you and bestow that blessing of that mantra upon you. This is the difference. All right? So mantra should never be sung with a speed or just in a very superficial way. It has to be very deep with feelings and understanding. 